Hello guys. So if we want to make it in five minutes, I will need to stick to English. Otherwise, one hour may be enough to explain it in, in Czech. So my talk today is about consistency in breakpoint declarations between CSS and JavaScript. First, let's answer the question, why is uh, breakpoint consistency important? We'll take a look at some examples from practice and we'll understand that. So we start a new project and in our style CSS file we declare the following crew where we target specific element. And later on in our app.js uh, file we want to target the same element for the same rule but by mistake we made, uh, we declare a different breakpoint, a breakpoint which is 20 pixels off as you can see. And that's because probably on our last project we used this breakpoint so this one is still in our head. What can we do? Or in the second example, uh, as you can see, we just tweaked the, the, the number, so instead of 68, now it's 86 pixels, and there is a typo in the match. So not uh, to mention here that in the end, this will result in a bug, which we don't like, of course. Um, another practical example, we start a new project, and we discuss with uh, our designer the breakpoints. We agree on the following. And somewhere, like, uh, slightly few days before the end of the project, uh, it's a nice sunny day, the designer comes and say, ah, we need to make small tweaks on the breakpoints. So now we're going to have like two new breakpoints and we're going to change the decorations for two of them. So go figure out where you need to make the change to make sure that you're consistent. So to answer the question, why is breakpoint consistency important? The answer is to make our developers life easier. Simple as that. So how can we share the same breakpoint declarations? I think the idea is quite simple. We just define the breakpoints in one place and we, we make JavaScript and CSS use it. Simple, right? So this is uh, mainly done with JSON. So we declare our breakpoints in a JSON file and we make JavaScript and CSS read it. And we, sh we know that it will be consistent. So let's take a look first at the JavaScript part, which is supposedly the easier one. On the right hand side you see the media query JSON file, those are uh, the, uh, the key and the values for the breakpoints. And the way that we want to use them is by using the same key that we declared in the media query JSON file by, and also adding a selector to it. So you can use whatever you like, whatever it makes sense to you. The way that I find it understandable and easy to use it is the following. We just declare phone down and we are targeting everything for that specific breakpoint. So how are we going to use that in our JavaScript file? First, in the app.js, uh, we're going to put a condition which says BP, which stands for breakpoint. And so BP is phone up. And if that's true, then we enter the book. Simple as that. How are we going to get this is method in our get query JS file? Uh, we, have the, uh, the, we export this is method, which we receive the, the device. And here we need to, uh, to check two things. First thing is if the device uh, contains one of the, of the keys that we have in our media query JSON file. And the second part is uh, if the device contain, contains the selector, which we define, which is up or down in our case. Once that's true, then we can uh, compose our window, uh, Windows match medium just by uh, using uh, the value for the corresponding key that we passed. So simple as that, you cannot make it mistake. You just declare it once, you use it everywhere. So now let's take a look on the CSS part. As, as we know, the CSS is smart. It's a nice thing, right? Uh, but not smart enough to read the JSON file, which we need to do something about it. What I suggest here is just using styles. Styles is awesome. You're going to like it. Um, the thing that I'm going to show now, you can do also with SAS and less. But I guarantee you that's going to be much more complicated. We need, you need to use some group tasks. And I don't know what. And with less, I cannot imagine even. Uh, so just take a, look, take a look here on this one. So we have the same media query JSON file and we would want to use it in the same way. What we do in our styles file, we're going to use it as media BP, which is again breakpoint, phone up or phone down. That's it. How are we going to get this BP object? It's just, uh, is that over there. So it's the JSON, which is the built-in function in, in styles, which accepts the JSON file and the second parameter is hash equals true. Uh, which is going to return us a hash object. So now we, can, uh, we, ha we have access to the key and to the value. So now what we need to do simply is just iterate over the object and create our media queries. That's it. With five lines of code, you have it. And you use it everywhere. So the conclusion is declare your breakpoints in one place. Use it everywhere as, uh, so you are not afraid of last second changes or typos. Consistency saves time, uh, saves uh, your time in long term. That means less, bu less bugs. You 
you, you have these codes and use it in every project. And use Stylus, the smartest CSS preprocessor. Once you try it, you won't regret it. And never go back. That's it. Thank you.